Good morning, Faith Sanctuary. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. This is our new normal for the next three weeks or so. Very glad you're able to join us, and we just want to give God thanks for his presence with us. We're going to start this morning by reading a psalm, and it's Psalm 100, and I'd like to read that out of the King James Version, and we're just going to turn our attention to the word of the Lord as we begin our service this week. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And as we have done many, many times at the start of our services, we're going to sing this little chorus of thanksgiving as the psalmist has instructed us. We need to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. that chorus again. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul to make sure you're actually singing wherever you may be uh, this is not performance time we have the professor dr. Chris Clark the maestro on Hammond because you can't have church without a Hammond organ for those who don't have a Hammond organ in your church God bless you I pray for you but uh, glad to have brother Chris and this is just like our little family devotion uh, which is what many of you are doing right now. So Heather's here, Elise is here, and the next generation, Asher, is here. And of course, Jesus is here, Amen. and we welcome him, and we honor him, and we thank him for his presence with us today. So the thing is, you need to be singing. One more time on thanks, and then we're going to sing that I just came to glorify your name. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. I just came to glorify, glorify your name. I just came to glorify, glorify your name. For
I just came to glorify, glorify your name. For you've got the sweetest name I know. I'll lift it, I'll lift it wherever I go. Just to glorify, glorify your name. Now, why don't we do that? Wherever you are, let's just lift our hands to the Lord. Let's lift our voices to him. Lord, I've come to glorify your name. Wherever we may be around this world, and I know people are joining us from all over, but we just want to come together in this moment of worship this moment of praise to our God. We want to lift him up, lift him up, glorify him. Yes, for you've got the sweetest name I know. I lift it, I lift it wherever I go just to glorify, glorify your one more time on the chorus. I just came, I just came to glorify, glorify your name. I just came to glorify, glorify your name. For I lift it, I lift it, wherever I go, just to glorify, glorify your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is the day you have made, and we rejoice, and we're glad in it. We are coming before your presence with thankful hearts. We are so joyful. We are so thankful that we know you and certainly that you know us. God, we are grateful for the opportunity of gathering today around uh, this world, wherever we may be. God, many churches, many of your people are in situations like ours where we cannot be physically together, but we're joining together by whatever means are available to us and we have come to glorify your name. Certainly we pray that you would be gracious to those who are going through severe trauma and trouble at this time. Some who are sick, in fact, some have died. And we pray for your comfort for those families who are grieving at this time. We thank you, Lord God, that you have brought many through and they have come through the sickness and are on the mend. But God, as we gather together today, we truly ask you to be in the midst of all of us, wherever your people are gathering around this world. Help us, Lord God, that even through electronic means, we can still feel that connection because more than electronics, more than the internet, it's really your spirit that binds us together. By one spirit, we have all been baptized into one body. And so we are still together. We are still one in you. And we pray, God, that you will help us today to glorify you as we have sung, to give you the honor and praise that you deserve. And we pray that you would help us to get through this time of trial and testing and sickness and disease. Lord, bring us out on the other side stronger and help us during the midst of this to truly look to you and allow you to work through us to be a blessing to those around us. We worship you. We thank you. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One more hymn before we continue. Good old hymn of the church. The Lord's our rock and him we hide. He's a shelter in the time of storm. If you know it, please sing with it. And, and we, we just want to continue to affirm that we know where our help comes from. Verse 1. 
the Lord's our rock. In him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears of arm, no foes of fright, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Let's sing verse 3 again. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. One more time on the chorus. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. shelter in the time of storm. Throwing my phone around, it needs a shelter in the time of storm. Amen. I just want to make some announcements at this time. We are very glad, of course, to greet all of the saints of Faith Sanctuary. Wherever you are, God bless you. I'm glad you're joining in. And there are just a lot of things I'd like to say this morning. Uh, not that it'll take a long time, but I just made a couple of notes so I won't forget. I want to greet all of our members, all of you who are doing your very best to stay safe and be good citizens and, and just keep from uh, being infected or infecting others, uh, those who have traveled. And I know you're in self-isolation at this time. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for playing your part. And certainly there are others who are members of other churches who have 
joined with us today because your church may not be uh, streaming this morning. And we welcome you, all of you people of God. We are very, very happy that you've joined us this morning. And then there are others who have just jumped on. You're not connected to any church. You just want to see what churches are doing right now, and we welcome you. And certainly, if you are in the Toronto area and you are not connected with the body of Christ, you're not part of a church uh, body, well, we'd love to invite you when the time comes that you would come and join us at Faith Sanctuary. We would love to welcome you, love to have you come and be with us. And of course, I greet all my pastoral colleagues, so many, even today, for some, this is their first time streaming a service, just trying to stay in touch with their, their congregations. And I greet all of you and bless you in the name of the Lord. And can I just give you a word of encouragement? Your community needs you to be online. Your community needs to hear your voice. There are those who look to you. And if this is the beginning of your online ministry, let it continue. There are people around the world you will bless. And so we, we're glad to have you aboard uh, this morning. Uh, I would, of course, beyond the church borders, I want to join with many others in thanking our healthcare workers for the wonderful work they have been doing. Uh, there are those who have retired and have come back to work. There are doctors and nurses around the world, to be honest, some of whom, having been in harm's way, have been infected with COVID-19, and some have died. And we just pray God's blessing on the families of those who are suffering at this time, but to say a heartfelt thank you to those who are working diligently to help to keep us safe. There are many retail workers uh, in pharmacies and uh, supermarkets in particular that are on site, on the job, trying to make sure that we have the necessities of life. God bless you and protect you and keep you safe as you go through uh, this time. We thank all of those who are in technical services. There are many who have been working around the clock to help many churches to get online and be able to communicate with your um, with, with their congregations, and we thank you for the time you have devoted to that to help us to, to communicate and to stay in touch. We, uh, I just want to thank all those caring people who have friends, relatives, they know seniors and people who are ill. They have been doing so many small kindnesses and shopping and taking people where they need to go. I just want to thank all of you for what you have done. And certainly, I do want to thank our governments, our city government, our provincial government, our federal government. We see that our government officials have been working hard and trying to alleviate the suffering that many of our our friends and neighbors are going through, some who are in financial hardship and difficulty. And I do want to thank our governmental leaders for their leadership and for their concern at this time. And so let's all join together as we, as we take another moment to pray. Let's pray for all of those who are working so hard, so diligently to help to keep us safe, our police officers, our transit workers, uh, those who are doing everything possible, our truck drivers, those who are still crossing the border trying to make sure that we have the things we need. Let's pray a blessing over them at this time. And God, we look to you and we thank you for those who are working very hard, working diligently from our government officials to those who are just going from house to house being a blessing to those in need. You see every act of kindness that has been done. You hear every word of love that has been spoken. You see all of those who are going above and beyond the call of duty to be a blessing to others. I pray that you would watch over them, everyone. I pray that you would keep them safe. I pray, Lord God, that you would, you would be a fence around them and help that all of us will be able to do whatever is in our power, do what is best on behalf of others, on behalf of our friends, our neighbors, our family. And God, watch over each one, protect and guide them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
typically after our, our announcements in our church service, we usually come to a time of giving. And I simply mention this because there are those who have asked, what can we do at this time and how can we continue to be a blessing to the work of the Lord? And certainly, I understand there are many folks who are suffering financially at this time. And again, we want to be conscious and be a help to them. And again, we thank our, our governmental officials who are trying to help in this way. If you would like to give, you are certainly free to stop by the church office, uh, whether you just leave an envelope in the mailbox or you uh, come in to the office during office hours, we are, are still here and we thank you for that. Those who would like to email a, a gift to the church, you can use donate at faithsanctuary.com. Uh, there are a couple of emails you can use. Donate at faithsanctuary.com is one. Donate number two, faith at faithsanctuary.com will work also. Or if you go on our website, uh, you'll see a button that says giving, and you can certainly use the InstaGive or InstaDonate uh, tool that's there and do everything in, uh, in your heart, anything that you desire to do to bless the work of God at this time. Now we're going to sing one more little chorus and I know some of you might be even taking time to uh, do your giving at this moment, but before we turn to the word of the Lord, I'd just like us to sing this little chorus. Uh, sometimes we think about trials and tests and tribulations that we go through. We think of hardships that we are enduring, some going through real hardship at this time. But we never want to forget what the Lord has done for us. Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me. And so let's sing this together and then we're going to turn our attention to the word of the Lord and just allow the Lord to speak to us this morning. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. You brought me out of the miry clay. You set my feet upon a rock to stay. You put a song in my soul today. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. You brought me out. You brought me out of the miry clay. You set my feet upon a rock to stay. You put a song in my soul today. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We bless you. We thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord God, that at all times, at all seasons, you are our God. We are in your hands. Our lives are in your hands. You bless us abundantly. And we know, Lord God, that you have a word for us. There's something you want to communicate to us. There are things that you want us to know and understand from your word. And we pray that you will open our hearts to receive what you have to say to us today. And Lord, we look to you and ask you to bless our hearts as we open your word. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. And before I uh, just get into reading the word of the Lord, um, let me just make one clarification. If you are coming uh, to the church office, it's 
probably best not to just leave envelopes in the mailbox. So just keep that in mind. Come in, uh, see Sister Heather. She'll be happy to see you and welcome you, and uh, that will be much better. Now, during this year, 2020, we have been going through a number of messages just talking about things that are very important for the body of Christ to know. Basic teachings, things that we need to understand, things that we need to rehearse in our minds and, and, and keep uh, uppermost in our minds. Possibly next week I will talk a little bit about this because there's a very interesting study that, that the Evangelical Council of Canada uh, Commission, that's the word I'm looking for, and, and it helps us to understand how we engage with the Bible and how important it is for us really to discuss the Word of God even as we are doing today. A lot of things that we need to know and need to remember and need to share. And so today we're talking about a very, very basic part of our Christian teaching, the importance and the role of water baptism. It is my act of faith. <clears throat> and so I, I often like to uh, just encapsulate our sermon in one sentence, just to give us something we can hang on to and, and certainly to make sure that, for me, I stay on track with what I'm trying to say. Jesus Christ offers salvation to everyone. We know that. And we personally receive it through our faith, through our repentance, and through baptism in his name. There are various elements that are at work and are at play in us coming to know the Lord and us coming to a place of uh, going, passing from death to life. And baptism is a critical part of that. And so we want to talk about that today. Now there are some things in life we all wish we could have, things we uh, wish we could do, places we wish we could go, uh, needs that we wish could be met. We could be at school, we could be on the job, we could be sitting at our kitchen table just daydreaming, fantasizing about things we'd like to see happen to us. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as these dreams and desires uh, motivate us to move forward and achieve our goals. However, there are uh, some needs we just can't meet and some goals we just can't achieve, no matter how hard we try. There are some careers we cannot enjoy and some things we, we can't acquire because of our own realities, our own inadequacies, shall we say. Personally, as much as I love to watch horses run fast, I'll never be a jockey. <laughs> I'll never be a race car driver or a fighter pilot, just too tall. And, and so we all have things we wish we could do, but it's just not meant to be. And then certainly for many, there are sicknesses and diseases. We have no power to control things that just seem to come upon us as we go through life. We're all born with a particular uh, package of DNA and and most of what happens in our physical body can be traced back to that. Uh, there was a story of a, a woman, very athletic a woman. Uh, she was a runner and started to feel some very severe knee pain. And as she had it checked out, she came to realize that she, uh, she had leukemia and, and now was hoping for a bone marrow transplant to save her life. These are things that just come upon us. There's another gentleman, and we've had actually two or three of these situations here in our city over the last couple of years. Um, a man running a marathon and in top physical condition, and as he uh, was nearing the end of the race, about two-thirds of the way through the race, he just collapsed, had a heart attack, and passed away. Some of you may have been to the doctor not too long ago and found that you have a, a rash here or, or a, a little mole there, something that's not right, a little blood showing up where it shouldn't. And when these things happen, we just start to ask a lot of questions. What's going on? What's going to happen with me? Well, when we come in contact with the Word of God, we find out that there's something even worse 
than all the things I've spoken about. There, there is something that, that is in us, a spiritual disease, a systemic blood poisoning that we call sin. And when we use that term, sin, it's simply saying or doing things that we know are wrong. Nobody has to tell us when we're doing wrong. Our, our conscience is our judge and jury, and we are well aware of the times that we have sinned. And if I can put it this way, sin is the worst disease uh, that has ever come to mankind, and it's fatal in all untreated cases. Because according to the word of God, the wages of sin is death. So what are we to do? Is there any hope for a sinner facing the death penalty? There are some who come to a realization of our spiritual condition before God, and they try to deal with it in various ways. There are some who actually come to church and, and think, you know, this is something I need to do. Many times they'll come and feel a strong uh, uh, conviction, as we use that word, that, that I, am in, I am in dire straits. I am a sinner in God's eyes, and, and they may weep and cry. Some leave and, and hope that that feeling goes away. There are some who are consumed by guilt and shame over the lives they have lived. There are some who have been as drastic as to take their own lives. There are some who try to hide their feelings and drown their sorrows, so to speak, uh, with, with uh, substance abuse. All of these things take place. Some try to deal with that guilt and that shame by saying, I will overcome my sin by doing good works. And this is a solution many have tried. But the truth is, salvation by good works is totally impossible. Because from the time we commit our very first sin, we have destroyed any possibility of attaining eternal life, except, of course, through Jesus Christ. So now let's turn our attention to the Word of God and get his perspective on this situation and discover his solution to our problem. And so Paul writes to the church in Rome, he says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reading to you from Romans chapter five, a few verses in that chapter. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Now I read that quite slowly, uh, deliberately, because I wanted to make sure we all heard these words. Please take the time to read them over on your own. That's Romans chapter five, verses one and two, verses six to eight, verse 12, and verses 18 and 19. Uh, of course, if you are ever looking for uh, notes of our sermons, you can find them on our website. And, and certainly, as you are watching this, uh, this service live, it will be archived, and you can come back to it at some point later on uh, during this week. After chapter 5, Paul takes us to a very important question that we all need to answer. He asks, 
in Romans 6, starting at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, uh, Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And so in chapter 5 and chapter 6, we see a couple of things happening. We see that there is this thing about being justified, being made right with God, as if we had not sinned. Jesus has made it possible for us to be justified by faith. And, and so when we believe in what he has done, when we believe that he died in our place for our sins, we come to him. And now in, in a vicarious transaction that takes place, Paul tells us in chapter 6 that we were buried with Christ through baptism. Now we understand that this is what happens when someone dies, we bury them. And symbolically, as we are baptized, we're saying, the old life I lived, a life lived in disobedience to the word of God, has now ended. And I'm now beginning a new life in Christ, with Christ, in the power of his resurrection. And so, so Paul writes about that, and he says, we were baptized, we were baptized into his death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. And so I'd like to just read some scriptures to us of all the things that we need to hear. The word of God is by far the most important. <clears throat> we express our faith in Jesus, our faith in his sacrifice for us at Calvary, through water baptism, our act of faith. And we are baptized in his name, acknowledging him as our Lord, our Savior, the one who has made this possible. And so at the end of the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16, it says, he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. That is, uh, baptism is a very, very important element of our conversion experience. Here's another one, uh, a, a whole story I'd like to read for us from Acts chapter 16. I'm going to begin at verse 35. Now, in context, Paul and Silas had been arrested for, for uh, seemingly desecrating the temple, and they'd gone through a whole, just a, a horrid time. And, and they were in jail, and they were beaten, and they were in bad shape. And, and so as they were there, they began to worship and thank and praise God in the middle of their trial. Now, this wasn't unusual. They, they had been through all kinds of things prior. But they had developed a response. There was something that they did clearly when they were in times of stress. It was about midnight, and this is Acts 16 and 25, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. And when the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. After he, called, um, after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved. I'll just pause here for a moment to say whatever this jailer had heard, 
he knew something about this was related to this salvation thing that obviously Paul and Silas had been talking about. What must I do to be saved? And you might be wondering, you may not seem to anyone to be really thinking about this and looking into this, but you may have that question in your mind today. I know that things aren't right. I know that I'm not as I should be. I know that I'm not living for God as I should. What must I do to be saved? And so in verse 31, they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. So it comes back to this thing that Paul was talking about. We need to have faith in Jesus Christ. We need to believe in him. We need to believe that he is the one who has taken our place and taken the penalty for our sins and has received our wages of sin, which is death. That's what Calvary is all about. We are in that time. We had uh, our... Uh, there, there are many who began this whole period of Lent and this, this time that leads up to Easter with our Ash Wednesday, when people uh, typically they will take ashes from the palms that were burned uh, the year before and they will uh, burn in the, as they thought about the procession of Jesus into Jerusalem. So uh, before Easter, uh, they burn these, uh, have these palms, and then they burn them, keep the ashes. And the next year now, 50 days before uh, Easter, they put those ashes on their forehead just as a reminder. Now, it is time that we're leading up to the time of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, and we want to be uh, conscious of that. There are those who will enter into a time of sacrifice, giving up certain things that they would normally uh, do or eat or uh, engage in to say we're putting this aside during Lent as we come up to Easter. And so as we uh, think of, of all of this leading up to Jesus' sacrifice, his death, his burial, and of course his resurrection, we believe in that. Apart, apart from being just a historical fact which can be verified quite easily by reading ancient sources, we go beyond that to say, I believe it's not just an act of history, but this is something Jesus did for me. And we receive, uh, we, we, we come in faith to receive salvation from him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and your household. Now verse 32 says, they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. And he, the jailer, took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds, and immediately he was baptized, he and his household. So faith is an important thing. But faith, when you think of that word, we, uh, we might use it as a noun to speak of faith or, or something that we, we understand is, is, is a thing that, that we may have. But the Word of God really takes it beyond that, and our life in general takes faith beyond just uh, an act of our mind into an action. There is something we will do on the basis of our faith. And in this case, his act of faith was baptism. He realized, I need to go through, as Paul spoke to us about in Romans, the death the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, and I do this through baptism. And so he was baptized, he and his household. He brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. And there are those that say, well, yes, that's, that's nice, but faith is really the important thing, and as long as you have faith, you don't really need to be worried too much about baptism. And so to answer that, let me just take you back to the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. And now this is talking about none other than our Lord Jesus. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, definitely, and do you come to me? But here's the response. Jesus answering said to him, Permit it 
at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And so Jesus himself came to John. Jesus, of all people, did not need to be baptized. He was sinless. He was pure. He is God. But he came to John, and he said, this is a righteous act that even I will obey because it is important for us to fulfill all righteousness. When we believe in Jesus Christ, in his death, his burial, his resurrection, that he is our savior from sin, that in him is eternal life, we come and we are baptized in his name. So we need to receive this word from the Lord with joyful hearts and to obey it quickly. We see this in Acts chapter 2 as we read from verse 37. Again, the background of this is that Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and he was really presenting to the crowd their culpability in killing Jesus. All of you were a part of this. You are a part of the crowd that said, crucify him. And so when they came to realize that, yes, they were responsible for crucifying Jesus, uh, they, when they heard this, this is Acts 2 and 37, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, be saved from this perverse generation. So then, those who had received his word were baptized. And that day, there were added about 3,000 souls. I pray that that will be duplicated in our time, that those hearing the word of the Lord today will decide, I need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, for some of you, if you're in the Toronto area, feel free to call the church, 416-244-4898. Uh, go online to faithsanctuary.com. You'll have our contact information there. We would be happy to baptize you in the name of the Lord. You may be in some other place, uh, who knows where, around the world. Email us, mail at faithsanctuary.com, and we will do our very best to put you in touch with someone who will be able to baptize you in the name of our Lord. It is crucial that we obey his word and be baptized in his name. So let me just give you a couple of little illustrations just to, to highlight how important baptism is, and then we'll pray our closing prayer. You can imagine a young woman, real smart, great brain, but from a family that doesn't have a lot of money. She gets a letter that says, you have been granted a scholarship of $50,000 to a prestigious university. You just need to come in and do the paperwork. So if I had people to do a little skit, we could do this. She runs into the living room with a letter in her hand and reads the letter to her mom with great excitement. Mom, you know, look at what they're offering. And her mom says, what are you going to do now, my dear? And she says, oh, I'm going to tell all my friends what a great offer I just received. Well, how is she actually going to receive the scholarship? She's going to sign it by going in and doing the paperwork and signing what needs to be signed. No signature, no scholarship. The same thing happens if you are offered a job and someone says, come in and sign uh, the offer letter. If you don't sign, you have no job. Consider the children of Israel. And I, I think of this just because uh, it's mentioned later in the, in the Word of God. Actually, in in this situation, we read about Israel in the book of Exodus. They came to a point where God delivered them from Egypt, and now they were coming to where they were going to cross over the Red Sea 
Uh, they didn't even know what was going to happen, but we know the story at this point. And, and so here is Amos, we'll call him, and he says, look at that, Simeon. Have you ever seen anything like it? Water is standing upright on both sides of us, and we can go right through the middle of it. God has given us a miracle so that we can escape these Egyptians once and for all. So Amos runs through uh, to the other side. Meanwhile, his friend Simeon is still standing, looking around. What should I do? Am I going to do this, or am I not going to do this? And Amos is over there saying, Simeon, hurry up. The Egyptians are behind you. <clears throat> and before you know it, uh, Simeon has his hands up trying to protect himself as he's run over by an Egyptian chariot. If you don't cross, you are not saved. And there was no way Israel could have escaped death without crossing over to the other side. Noah was in exactly the same situation. And you can imagine his neighbor saying, after over a hundred years of Noah building, Noah, um, what have you done? What is this thing? Noah said, well, it's an ark. It's a boat that I've made. You need to come in with me and my family so that you will be saved from the flood that God is going to send on the earth. Ah, oh, no, I don't know. None of my friends are in there. I, I'm not really sure. And, of course, the flood came, and only Noah and his family were saved. So the last scripture I want to read for you comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. Peter said, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. In which also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Peter brings it all together. Jesus is the one who died as the, as the, the, the payment for our sins. And as we come to him, it puts us in mind of what happened in Noah's day. As they came into the ark, they were saved from the judgment and wrath of God. Corresponding to that, verse 21 tells us, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh. It's not a matter of us washing ourselves to be clean. It is an appeal to God from a good conscience and for a good conscience. And this is all possible through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so if you have not already taken advantage of the Lord's incredible offer. Let this day, today, become a new anniversary on your calendar, the day that you decided you are going to give yourself completely to God in faith and act out your faith through baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I, I was thinking about this message, and um, for those who are old enough to remember way back, there was a singer by the name of Nina Simone, and she popularized a, a song that said, take me to the water to be baptized. Well, uh, there are parts of that song that uh, the, the first part we will sing, but then someone sort of added some lyrics to it, and we're going to use these borrowed lyrics as we sing this song today before we pray. It says... Take me to the water. Sing it with me if you know it. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be baptized. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. 
Won't you take me to the water? Take me to the water to be baptized in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Baptize me in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus to be baptized. Let's sing that again. It's in his name. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it's in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus to be baptized. Another prayer. With the Holy Spirit. the Holy Spirit, yes, with the Holy Spirit, Lord, please fill me now. Join in this prayer with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. It is the born again experience. It's the born again experience. In Jesus' name, take me to the water. Take me to the water. Lord, take me to the water. Please take me to the water to be baptized. You may be able to see behind me for those who are close enough to come. We have water. Just come. And at any time, we'll be more than happy to baptize you in the name of the Lord. For those who were wondering, what is baptism all about? Hopefully today you have a clearer understanding. But more than a knowledge in our heads, we need to put this in action and be baptized in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your sacrifice for us. We thank you that beyond anything else that anyone could do to try to help us. It is you who really made it possible for us to come and join in your death, your burial, and your resurrection so that as you died, we died. And as you were resurrected, we have been resurrected to eternal life in Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord, and we thank you. And I pray that there are many today who will decide, yes, I need to take this step. This is my act of faith, and I'm coming quickly to be baptized in the name of our Lord. We thank you, we bless you, and we honor you, Lord God. Be with us and watch over us until we are able to meet again in person in your house. Lord God, be with your people. Be with those who are sick. Watch over each one. Help us to do everything in our power to be a light in this world to be Christ in this world, and to allow you to work through us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. For these blessings, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.